So what you can do is you can go down to the um to the uh, description box and click the link. The show is called Chavez uh, Canelo versus Chavez: The Battle for Mexico. Now, basically, there is no HBO twenty four seven as a series for um, Canelo versus Chavez. Um, but we do have tonight, meaning about um, about six seven hours after this video. Right now, it's three p.m. Eastern Standard Time, April twenty fourth, twenty seventeen. On HBO, there's a show, I believe it's an hour long. It could be in half an hour. Basically, it's called uh, Canelo vs. Chavez, A Fighting Tradition. Now, we it's supposed to be a preview on the fight, but also it's supposed... It, okay, it's supposed to be like a preview, HBO 24-7-ish type, type of show for the fight, but also it's supposed to look at Mexican boxing as a whole, I guess. One of the reasons why I wanted to, um, um, HBO 24-7 is... For a fight like this, of this magnitude, when you have storylines that are involved with Chavez Jr., who could literally erase all of his past mistakes as being known as a, a drug cheat, unfocused, privileged, can't make weight, you know, disappointment to his father. If he was to beat Canelo Alvarez, all that could be, you know, just wiped out if he was to beat Canelo. So that's why I felt an HBO 24 7 is needed. Now, if you factor in, if you factor in, that Canelo is a golden boy fighter, right? He is the number one golden boy fighter. You can say that he is golden boy promotions. He is the protege of Oscar De La Hoya, who beat Julio Cesar Chavez Sr. So you wonder, my goddamn brand placement. So you wonder, like, to yourself, like, well, why not an HBO 24-7? You know, this is the perfect opportunity for a classic three to four episode HBO 24-7. But instead, what we got was, we've been getting a lot of online social media content. What I've noticed is, did you notice that uh, Chavez Jr. been making a training documentary? Dude has been training his ass off. What I noticed about, before I, before, before I continue, let me say, so basically, we, we get, as far as um, content, as far as video, you know, well put together content for Canelo versus Chavez. So far, we have, um, for example, tonight on HBO, I'm going to be doing a review on that. Uh, uh, Canelo versus Chavez, a fighting tradition that is 10 p.m. tonight, Eastern Standard Time on HBO. We had that um, that um, HBO um, boxing on their YouTube page preview show for um, Canelo versus Chavez. That's a half an hour long, and then we had this video that I'm talking about that they seem to be using Ray Donovan. It sounds like Ray Donovan, Donovan or Sabretooth, the guy that does the HBO 24/7, uh, Lee Schreiber. I believe that's how you pronounce his name. Um, I believe they had him for this special. The one I'm talking about, click the link right there in the, in the bio if you want to watch it. And basically, it focused on training. One of the key um, things that they talked about is, in fact, we want to play it for you. One of, one of the key things they talked about was, you know, how this fight came about. So basically, Canelo versus Chavez was in the works since November. Oh, here it is. Because the fight, uh, there was one big obstacle. Okay, let's start right here. Let's start right here. Oh, by the way, please subscribe. We're going to be Bro, covering the fight. You like my Mexican shot. style already? The possibility of facing I got some time. We're going to talk about it. Served well as inspiration and sparked a new commitment for both father and son. When I spoke with Julio and he realized that fighting Canelo was a real possibility, that moment everything changed. Everything changed for him. When we sat down and discussed the fight, uh, there was one big obstacle. Junior had a fight scheduled a month out. And uh, first things first, we had to make sure that he could make weight. And basically that fight, it can be described as an audition for this big fight. Not only did Julio make the weight at 168 pounds, but he wanted to make a point and came in under 168. He came in at 167.8. I followed Chavez's career very closely. That's part of my job. And I've never seen him more focused than he is for this fight. This fight is for all of Mexico. The winner will be king of Mexico. Doubling down on his commitment, Julio has agreed to train under the exacting standards of famed Mexican trainer. Um, so basically to uh, paraphrase, um, they knew about Chavez's last fight. A lot of people don't know Chavez fought to unanimous decision on um, December the 10th, 2016 against a fighter by the name of Dominic British. The catchweight 
for that fight was 169, I believe. Chavez weighed just under 168, as they said, you know, to prove a point. I don't know how much of a point that's proven to you, but he made under 168. He didn't come on a scale at exactly 168, you know. So um, they said they knew about this fight a month before, you know. They was trying, okay, basically, they were trying to make Canelo versus um, Chavez in November of 2016. We didn't find out about it until, what, uh, February, correct? You know, so Chavez since has been doing nothing but training. Now, let's go back and count how many fights Chavez has had over the 160-pound division. Now, he's been fighting, you know, at, he's been fighting at 160 or, or one above 154, you know, since 2008, right? So that's basically, you know, you might as well say nine years he's been fighting, you know, above that division. So since then, he has had one, two, three, four, five, six... 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 fights over the 154-pound, you know, um, limit or at 160 pounds in the last nine years. In the last, what, five years, he has fought one, two, three, four, five fights at either heavyweight or super middleweight. Dude, it's huge. So people are wondering, you know, well, he hasn't made 160 pounds since he fought Sergio Martinez um, four plus years ago. You know, four plus years ago. Remember, we're um, in April right now, April the 24th of 2017. He fought Sergio Martinez in um, September of 2012. That Brian Vera fight, which was his next fight after that, over a year later in uh, September 28th of 2013, was supposed to be originally at 162, then 164, then it blew all the way up to 172 pounds because Chavez just wasn't focused. His next fight, he was going to be fined a significant amount for him for each pound that he weighed over the 168-pound um, limit. He made 168 pounds, 167 and a half, and said, I make weight. He fought from Farah at 172 pounds. That was the catch weight. As you can see, what happened with that fight, something that I feel would similarly happen to Canelo. Chavez Jr., power did not carry up. Did you notice that? His power did not carry up. So what did he do? He quit because he lost, because once he got knocked down and once he knew he couldn't bully his way through Fanfara, you know, everything just collapsed. So even though Canelo was getting a lot of shit for dropping his belt, you have another fighter who quit. So that's why I say, you know, like, even though this, um, it was called Mano a Mano, the battle um, from Mexico, Canelo versus Chavez, even though it's good, you know, still, I really want to, I, I really felt that an HBO 24-7 would have really got into all the past, you know, issues of, of um, Chavez Jr., you know, being a, being, being a quitter, being, you know, um, um, failing drug tests, being, you know, um, um, overprivileged or privileged. You know, not being focused. You know, I, f I really feel that, you know, that would have really got people more hyped for the fight. People are already hyped, you know. But I really feel that um, that part was missing. So on April the 29th, you know, the week before the fight, we're going to get the Canelo versus Chavez HBO face-off of Max Kellerman. I'm really interested to see, you know, um, I'm really interested to see, you know, those two fighters interacting. Because, you know, the last face-off um, that... that Chavez was involved in, was with uh, Sergio Martinez, and he was talking all that shit. And remember, he did, you know, no matter how you look at it, I understand Sergio Martinez won the fight, but he did kind of end Sergio Martinez's career just with one round, pretty much, you know? So, going forward, I'm Tea Street Controversy. This is Tea Street Controversy Live. I cover every single major fight live. If you want to see the full episode of Mano a Mano, or if you want to see um, that other uh, Golden Boy half an hour special I was talking about, go right down to the description box, click that link, and you'll be able to watch it. Um, we have a lot of advancements being made. I understand a lot of people have been bitching and complaining about, well, you don't look into the camera. I have a brand new full studio set that is set to be under construction in just a few weeks. You know, so we're having a full, we're getting a full studio desk, custom made table, you know, grand lighting. We're going on for full um, HD and high definition. I did want to have it done before Canelo versus Chavez, but let's just look at this as like the, um, like the uh, the season finale that's coming up. Also, Fight View 360 gear. You know, as you can see, we got our um, you know, our our Mexican colors on. I found out a few weeks ago that I was um half black, half um Irish, and half Negro Mexicano. You know, so I'm gonna be drinking some Tecate. I got some um, 
you know, some more uh, Mexican themed stuff, you know, on the way before the fight. You know, so if you, you know, we're going to be selling merchandise soon. I'm going to be wearing Fight View 360 hats. We're going to be, you know, everything's going to be Fight View 360. You know, so if you like this hoodie, let me know. Also, we're going to have hoodies with, um, or shirts or t-shirts with bigger logos, smaller logos, you know, different color themes, maybe an all red one, you know, an all, you know, green one, you know, even some UK colors, you know, we're getting there. Please subscribe. All the links to my social media are right down below in the description box. I'm Tissue Controversy, and this is Tissue Controversy Live.